Hey guys, welcome to Selenium with Java April 2023 batch online training session 7. In today's sessions, I will cover the important remaining topic from the Selenium web driver where you can get to know how to handle frames, how to capture screenshot, how to handle windows alert, how to perform headless browser testing, how to handle cookies, what is the importance of buy or locator in Selenium web driver, how to select an option from auto suggestive drop down in Selenium. So what is frame? So frame is a web page which is embedded in another web page or an HTML document embedded inside another HTML document. The frame is often used to insert content from another source such as an advertisement into a web page. The frame track specifies a frame or iframe tag specifies a iframe. So user cannot detect the frame by just seeing the page. So how can you identify any frame is available or not? First, suppose say this is my page where I know that some frame is available. So if you open that any page, so how can you identify if any page frame is available? So you need to right click here and there will be some option available called reload frame, right? But here it is not able to see. But in that particular section, that frame is available, I know. So in case you already know that which section the frame is available, you can right click and you could able to see the option called reload frame or view frame source. So that is the way. But it is not possible for any user to inspect all the pages because in the pages there will be multiple blocks, multiple segment, right? multiple area. But frame might be available in a single uh, spaces or single block. So it is not be possible sometime to identify that frame by right clicking all this option. Because until frame is available you will not able to see. Then what is the best option through which you can identify whether any frame is available in the page or not. So what you need to do? You need to press F12 button from your keyboard. So you can go to that right inspect element options. After that, you can press Ctrl F from your keyboard, Ctrl F. So search button will come. Here you can type iframe. Okay, you could see one of one means one frame is available and that tag will start with iframe. So that means iframe is available. If you enter, you could see that is highlighting the section in the left pan, right? You could see the what is the name? It is coming. Name is coming iframe dot demo hyphen frame right if you press enter here you could see so that is the way you could easily understand that frame is available so what you need to do in case frame is available in web page so you cannot <coughs> identify any element until you are handling the frame in case element is identified through any web element locator technique like id name class name but in case you are not handling the frame it is not possible to interact with the element so what you need to do first you need to identify right whether any frame is available then you can get the count of the frame from the page then you can know right the frame is available that one two three or five frame is available then how you can handle the frame using selenium web driver so to switch between frame user have to use the driver switch to dot frame command and user can use the switch to dot frame in right three way one is in case you know that frame number so you can use indexing so in case the frame number is three so indexing will start from zero one two so switch to dot frame and frame in number index will be integer always so you need to pass that indexing so pass the frame index and driver will switch to that frame then in case you already know the frame name or id then you can pass it so it will be string definitely so switch to dot frame frame name or id pass the frame element name or id and driver will switch to that frame and last option is web element reference sometime frame might have some web element reference like class and other stuff so you can switch to the frame with the help of web element reference so pass the frame web element and driver will switch to that frame now see how we can really deal with the frame so this is the web page right where the frame is available 
so this is similar to here only right droppable jquery.com droppable page so if i go to the code right so first thing is that i will set up the properties for the chrome driver i'll be creating the object code instance for the web driver interface using chrome driver class i will try to maximize the page and i will navigate to that page then i want to uh, get the frame size so how can i get it driver dot find element it will be elements not element because i want to get right uh, so, uh, get the list of frame available so here it will be by dot tag name okay so you could see there are multiple tag name might be available id name i uh, sorry tag sorry multiple element locator can be available like id name class name expert css link text partial link text similarly tag name is also a element locator i can use the tag name here you need to pass that tag name is the string format so what is the tag name it will be iframe that is the tag name so i want to search how many frame is available with the help of that tag name it will be give me the list of element i mean right but in case i want to get the size so it will be giving me the size right you could see so return type is integer so i can store in some integer variable so say integer variable is integer uh, frame size so that is the way i can store it now i can print it out simply how many frame is available so 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 that variable i can print it out now if i run my code so it will be give me the count as one because only one frame is available in the web page so it will open the page and it will try to identify right how many frame is available with the tag name called iframe and it will give me the count in the console here you could see the count is one so i already know that only one frame is available so i can identify right i can navigate to the frame with the help of index so index will be always zero because it will start from zero to n minus one in case size of the frame is n then here let's try to right drag and drop this part so there is a frame available so i need to identify the frame and i need to mouse over to the frame and then i need to drag and drop so how drag and drop is possible so in selenium web driver there is actions class available where there are a lot of methods available for dragging and dropping so let's try to create let's comment it out first because i already got that count of the frame so i will be creating first web element reference for the drag option drag me my target so that is the element so you could see id is droppable so with that help of the id i can right identify the source element which is drag me to my target so i will be creating a web element called source equal to driver dot find element by dot id what is the id id is draggable within the double quote i need to give so some error is coming so this is the web element is the class available from selenium web driver I need to import it from the org.openq.selenium. So error message is solved. Okay. Similar way, I need to identify right the element where I need to drop here. So droppable item. Sorry, uh, it is a uh, okay. The droppable item I have identified. So draggable also I need to identify it called target. So I can give the name called target. So what is the source? element let's try to give here so you could see that is called draggable id is draggable so that is the child here so i need to go to the parent so that is the id of the drag me to my target so i can change it here and what is the target where i need to move it here right so what is the target so i can mouse it over and i can go here you could see id is droppable so i already copy it and i can paste it here so that is the way i already identified the two element and i have right trying to store in the web element reference called source and target element then i can create the object or instance for the actions class whatever available in selenium web driver so how can i create actions act object equal to new 
accents where I need to pass the driver reference so that is the way I can create object or instance for the accents class now let's try to import the accents class from the org.openqa.selenium.interactions so after the error message gone then in the accents class there is a options available method available called drag and drop you could see drag and drop right and where I can write re provide the reference from the source element which need to be dropped to the target element so I can give source and target then I need to build and perform so I'll be calling the build method from the actions class dot perform so that is the way I can drag and drop any element with the help of actions class now let's try to run the code and let's see whether it's working or not so what will happen it will not work because these two element drag and drop is available in the inside the iframe but I did not return any code to handle the iframe to switch to the frame okay so what will happen though your ID, uh, ID is correct for the draggable and droppable but as we, we are not switching to the frame so it will not able to identify the code is not able to identify the source and target element so it will fail now let's try to run it so forget about the accents it will not able to identify the element it will fail in the element identification step so like drag and drop operation will not be successful okay it will throw the error what is the error you could see what is the line number line number 22 error is coming right after that this line will not be executed because until the error is handled right remaining line will not be executed okay so what I will do so what is the error message coming you could see no such element exception okay that is the error coming and here it is showing that like uh, whatever element locator you have given it is not able to identify with the help of draggable so so whenever you are not able to identify the element though your ID is correct so there might be couple of like problem maybe that is in other window maybe some frame is available maybe that page is not loaded right so that is the different problem might come so as and when you'll be working more and more uh, for the uh, code you'll be getting more and more clarity and that is the way right you will be uh, becoming expert to debugging your code and to solve the problem so now I already written my code but I did not handle the frame that is the reason it is not working so what I need to do before identify the element right before doing the operation I need to move to the frame so what I how can I go to the frame driver dot switch to right you could see that is the method coming dot frame right and here you could see either you can give integer argument 0 means index either you can give string which is nothing but the name or ID of the frame in case it is available otherwise you can give the web element reference ok so that is the way you can deal with the frame so here I already know only one frame is available so I can give the index called 0 ok now you could see so you are handling frame index ok so now I already opened the page after that immediately I am switching to the frame then as I switching to the frame here in that particular option right so I can easily identify the web element source and target with the help of the ID draggable and droppable then with the help of the actions class object I can drag and drop source to the target right and with the help of the build and perform methods as well available in the actions class now let's try to execute your code and let's see whether drag and drop is opening or not it will open the page and it will identify both the element it will drag and drop you could see drag and drop is happening here so that is the way you can handle the frame and after that once you handle the frame then you can identify any element inside the frame and then you can do the operation 
So here I have tried to give an example called drag and drop. Any kind of operation it can be there. Right? It can be input field. It can be radio button. So you can enter some value. You can click. You can right click a link in case some link is available inside the frame. But you need to handle the frame. So there are two other way to handle the frame is in case you are having the uh, frame name or ID or web element different. So if you go to the frame here section. Uh, if you enter uh, here right iframe so you could see that is the iframe track so what is available name or uh, id is not available for the frame but sometime for some frame it might be available name or id so here only one option we can use called indexing because only one frame available so indexing will be zero in case frame size is n indexing will start from zero to n minus one other way some class is available for the frame so i can use that one to handle the frame which is nothing but the web element reference so let's try to comment it out that options and i will handle the frame other way driver dot switch to dot frame you could see that is the another option which is web element reference so what is web element nothing like but driver dot find element by dot id or class name or name like that so driver dot find element here by dot class name so what is the class name for this frame available which is demo hyphen frame so with that help of that web element reference class name i can still handle the frame right now let's try to execute it so i am not i am commenting out that switch part sorry indexing part but still i can handle the frame with the help of right web element reference so here i am handling the frame with web element now let's try to execute the code so it will be still be executed so frame can be handled in any of the options either through indexing or name or id or web element reference so it will overload the page it will drag and drop the item right because I already handled the frame with another approach called web element reference. So that is the way you can <coughs> handle the frame pass. After that, you can write, uh, do the identify the element and you can do any kind of operation. The next topic is how to capture screenshot. So I will cover in that code itself how to capture the screenshot. After that, I will take a pause and then I will take any questions you are having. So capturing screenshot is always important for any kind of testing. It does not matter you are doing uh, manual testing, you are doing automation testing for API, you are doing automation testing for UI, automation testing for mobile apps, it does not matter. Always ca capture screenshot will be, sorry, keeps, screenshot is really required. Capturing the screenshot is really important because for your test evidence, because you need to provide your test result. So in case you are not taking the screenshot for the important validation, then how you will produce your result? So capturing the screenshot for the test execution in is one of the important script Is it fine? Is it better? Harshita or Nati? Are you able to hear me? Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, let me know. Uh, it might be some network disturbance also will be there. Okay. So, capturing the screenshot for the test execution is one of the important script in any test automation which help user to identify defects and problems by referring the screenshot. So, Selenium WebDriver provides take screenshot interface to capture a screenshot of the web page when an exception or error occurred during the execution of the code so when a tester test any application maybe many of the functionality not working compared to the expected result so tester <laughs> lock this defect and tell the developers about the getting of defect in the code and suggest to fix the defect or bug to retest once again 
However, developer never accept defect without required evidence and details. So developer need the required evidence to analyze the issue. That is why taking the screenshot is one of the mandatory evidence to view and understand why the test case has failed. User can take screenshot in image file right called PNG, JPG or JPEG. And after that, in case you are having multiple screenshot, you can right paste it in the Word document or Excel. So that is the way taking screenshot is always important to certify that you have performed something. Right, whether it's a pass or fail does not matter. Basically about the failure, <laughs> you need to definitely take the screenshot in case you are logging a defect. You need to attach those screenshot in the defect so that every stakeholder associated with the defect can understand <coughs> what are the way you have already executed your test case and what is the defect, what is the root cause, what is the problem coming from the screenshot itself. So some of the possible scenario where user might need to capture screenshot using Selenium WebDriver like application issues, assertion failures, difficulty to find web element on the web page, timeout to find web element on the web page, exception or error occur during runtime. So how you can capture screenshot? So capturing screenshot in Selenium WebDriver is a three step process. First, you need to create an object or instance for the take screenshot interface available in Selenium WebDriver. As it is an interface, you cannot directly create an object or instance, so you need to take help from the driver object and you need to typecast the driver. After that, right, there is a method available in the text screenshot interface called get screenshot as method. With the help of that, you can create a source file and output type will be file always. So here the you could see file source file equal to screenshot that is the object or instance for the text screenshot interface and you are calling great screenshot as method and you are mentioning output type dot file. So the argument output type dot file specified in the get screenshot as method will return the captured screenshot in the form of file. Therefore user can store in the variable source file with the type as file. The next last important part is that whatever you already stored in the source right you need to save that. So you need to save the file object returned by great screenshot as method using copy method of the file handler class. So file handler class copy source file to the destination file and that way you can capture the screenshot. Now let's see how you can capture the screenshot in the real time. So you are already performing the drag, drag and drop operation here right. So I want to capture the screenshot here. Okay, so after drag and drop is performed, right, I want to capture the screenshot here. So what I will do, I will be similar way, I will be just using. So whatever way is mentioned, take screenshot interface. So I will be calling that one takes. If you do not know, just write something and press control space. So you could see take screenshot interface. I is the interface. It is coming from org.openq.selenium. I can create something uh, object called screenshot and I can create the object or instance with the help of type casting the driver. So that is the way you can create the object or instance for the take screenshot interface. So that is the first option. Then I need to create a variable for source file. So I will be calling the file class in Java. So src file equal to screenshot object I need to call it. Then if you press dot automatically the method you can get get screenshot as you could see that you can need to give the output type. It returns the runtime class of the object return class you could see. Okay. So you need to use that output type dot file, file type you need to use. Okay. So that is the way you can capture the, I mean you can uh, write, uh, save it in the source file. So I need, what error message is coming, so I need to import file class from the java.io package. Then next, 
you need to give some destination file where you will be storing the screenshot right so with the help of the file class I will be creating variable called destination file so say I want to store the screenshot in my report folder right in my desktop there is a report folder available and I want to store the screenshot in the report folder so I will be giving called new file and here I will be giving the reference within the double quote so I can uh, mention uh, something called um, slash slash test is the screenshot name dot png that is the it type okay so that is the way I want to store the screenshot in my report folder and screenshot name will be test dot png okay so I already created my destination file after that you need to call the copy method from the file handler class and you need to place source to destination file so that is the part you need to do so I'll be using file handler that is the class from the org.openq.selenium not from the java util.logging always remember because that is the thing is coming from the selenium web driver right and dot copy you could see file from and file to so source file destination file now if you run your code so what will happen okay now if you run your code so what will happen so it will definitely drag and drop after that it will take a screenshot and it will place in the report folder with the name as test.png okay you could see go to the report folder now it's created right test.png got created if you right click and if you go to the properties you could see 13th May 734 49 pm return type is png that is the path of the location and if you double click here you could able to see the screenshot okay drag and drop okay next time no need to remove it right next time again if you run some code maybe for other pages so what will happen same screenshot will be replaced so that is the reason right you cannot take all the screenshot so same screenshot will be replaced with the latest timing okay so now if you go here and you could see same screenshot got replaced and that is the latest timing will be right uh, 7 uh, maybe 35 right 7 35 to 36 pm so we cannot always hard code the screenshot and sometime I need to uh, need to take screenshot multiple time after opening the page after drag and drop maybe after navigating to the other page so is it possible right to copy the code again and again and again no it is not possible so what we will do we will create a reusable method for capturing the screenshot okay so what we will do here we will be creating a uh, reusable method okay for capturing the screenshot and then I will call it again and again and again any number of time to take the screenshot so return type will be sorry access modifier will be public then I can create a static uh, method so that static means automatically no need to create an object or instance as and when you are creating some variable or method is static you can call directly in the main method okay so return type will be void and method name say I can give something called uh, capture screenshot that is the method name and here I will be passing some reference so that I will not hard code anything ok so I will be passing web driver reference web driver driver and where I need to capture the screenshot I will be passing that path so string uh, maybe mm, uh, screenshot path right so that is the thing I am doing it I am passing this to argument after that same line I can copy here let's comment it out first and same line I'll copy it because same thing I'll be implementing here right in the method as well so few thing I'll be changing it so text screenshot mm, interface I'll be creating the object or instance right then source file same thing will be there 
and destination file here instead of that location I can give the file path so that is the thing you need to change here so that whenever I'll be calling it I will be giving the file path that time okay then otherwise remaining thing will be same and here you will be getting some IO exception so you need to surround with tie catch block or throws declaration so I can give something called exception because in case you want to deal with some input output or else you need to surround with tie catch block or you need to give some exception okay so that is the way I already created the method so method or usable component method or function is nothing but the usable component so that is the reason right you can create the method one time and you can call n number of times and always whenever you are creating the method always try to remember that instead of hard coding something try to pass some parameter so that you can change the parameter value whenever you are calling the method okay so that part is already done in the session 7 I already created the method which is static in nature which is capture screenshot right then what I will be doing it that is the class name so after opening the page I want to take a screenshot okay so after opening the page I want to take a screenshot so dot you could see immediately that method is coming because that is the reason I have make it static so in case you are declaring something static in the real time framework as well you will be declaring the method all static so that you no need to create an object or instance of the class automatically you can call the method using the class reference right you could see capture screenshot is coming so you can pass the driver reference and here you can pass the path so what I'll do I will not hard code everything I will try to give something so that it will not override so here the path this is my first part in the report folder I want to store okay so that is the path I can give it then I will concatenate right what how I will concatenate I want to give the system milliseconds so that millisecond will be always unique so that it will not be I mean replaced system dot one second driver yeah the report folder then concatenation sign oh I need to surround here with the double quote that is the reason okay because that is one part that is the folder where I want to capture the screenshot then I will be add concatenating in that path system dot current millisecond you could see that is the methods available so that part will be added to that in the path after that what is the type I want to add again I need to use plus and then within the double code I need to give that extension dot png or jpj or jpg anything you can give it so that is the way you can call it okay similarly after opening the page I have taken a screenshot similarly after drag and drop is happening I want to take a screenshot you could see how easily I can use the same line here no need to change anything so automatically it will create a jpj file with the current times millisecond so it will be always unique so that is the reason in case you want to capture the screenshot 10 times you can copy the same line and it will create 10 screenshots so that is the beauty of the reusable component or the method for capturing the screenshot now let's try to execute it so test dot jpg will not be or png will not be replaced here so it will first try to open the page it will drag and drop so I want to take two screenshot one is after open the page one is after drag and drop so you could go to the report folder you could see here these two screenshot got created right you could see that is the millisecond format this is an format if you open any screenshot you could see this is the before the drag and drop and the next one is after drag and drop and this is the test.jpg right so that is the way right instead of 
write calling and uh, I mean calling the uh, creating the methods or creating the step in the code itself right you can create object or instance which can be reused in number of time in your real-time code and whenever you are creating the screenshot always try to write be the method as static and always try to provide or pass the argument and you can give the argument value for the file path of capturing the screenshot during calling the method in the real time okay I will take a pause guys any questions is it understandable in the real time also because capture screenshot is always required so you need to create the method how will be creating the method in the class level right so you'll be creating the method by providing the argument by making it static so that automatically you can call it with the help of class reference you no need to create the object or instance you can already create the uh, you, you can call the with the help of the class reference and during the uh, during calling time you need to provide the argument right where you, you need to provide the driver web driver driver and you need to provide the path so always path should be same but you can use something extension call which will always unique in nature so that next time it will not be right kind of replace your existing insert will not be replaced and if you run it again right you could see another two more screenshot will be created for every steps wherever you want to capture the screenshot in case you are having you need to capture screenshot for 10 step it will be like that so you can call the same method again and again and again 10 times so now if you go to the file path right you could see another two more screenshot got created what is the time 744 it should be let us in be like 744 yeah, this is 742 right this one also 742 okay the next one is 744 you could see 744 so that is the way it will be also 744 that is the way nothing will be replaced and you can get the screenshot as and when required and you can use them for your real time I will just uh, comment out the code here before going to the next topics the next one is how to handle alert or pop-up window using selenium web driver because in case some alert or pop-up is coming those alert or pop-up you cannot identify with the help of element locator technique it is not possible that is the problem right you need to take help from the selenium alert interface so alert is a small message box which displays on screen notification to give the user some kind of information or ask for a permission to perform certain kind of operation it may also be used for <coughs> warning purposes alert in web page in java is a java properties but not the html properties hence element for the alert cannot be recognized through element inspection so these are the kind of alert simple alert example i have given sometime right alert text you can get it some of this is the alert text please enter your name that text you need to validate right you need to click on the ok button or e cancel button sometimes yes or no can be there right you need to click on the yes or no right sometime so alert interface provides four important key methods which are widely used in selenium web driver one is the dismiss so that you can dismiss the alert or cancel the alert or you can click on the no button accept means you can click on the ok or yes button of the alert you can get the string right sorry get the text with the help of alert get text or you can enter some data here right with the help of send keys so alert interface will provide these four important methods for handling the alert so this is the example of alert interface okay uh, yeah this is the alert interface so i will try to navigate to that part here first driver dot get this is the url where alert will be there so if you click anything here right you could see i am a js alert and you there is only ok button available so you can accept it or dismiss it you could see you have successfully click an alert if you could see here is a ok and cancel button available you can cancel it it will be dismissed right click on cancel and there is a 
uh, uh, another alert options available here so you can enter some value along with ok and cancel after that you can also get that text so this is the fourth thing you can do suppose say I want to enter her rather than here right ok and you can, if you click ok so you could see you entered her rather than if you click here if you click on the cancel you could see entered null so that is the way you can handle the alert and you can right get the required thing so you can click on the ok button or yes you can click on the cancel or dismiss the alert you can get the alert text or you can enter some value in the alert so let's try to identify the element first js prompt so press f12 button here let's try to go here so you could see uh, there is no, no element locator technique available right id name class name nothing so i can use a xpath here so this is the text and this what is the tag name called button so if you press ctrl f slash slash button is the tag name and then you can give here after that <coughs> because text available called jsalad right so i can create with the help of text export um, equal to so that is the way you could see it is highlighting the element so that is the way I can create xpath for the element tag name because that is the text so I will be using text dot text equal to value so driver dot find element by dot xpath dot click I want to click here right so that alert will be displayed <coughs> alert will be displayed right here I can click on the ok so let's try to click on the ok here so what you need to do you need to use driver dot switch to dot alert dot accept to accept the alert driver dot switch to dot alert dot accept alert now let's try to run the code and let's see whether the alert is getting accepted or not okay you could see alert accepted but you entered nothing that is the reason it is showing but I want to enter something after that I want to handle the alert accept the alert so alert dot send keys right so here say I want to enter her one two three because that will be string right so what will happen it will enter that one and it will accept it now let's try to run it <coughs> you could see already entered right in that field that is the reason you entered other than 1 2 3 if you want to dismiss the alert so it will be dismiss now let's see whether dismiss or not after entering the field though you are entering but it is clicking on the cancel so it will be showing as null it does not matter whatever value you are entering but you are clicking on the cancel so it is not saved there right that value is not pushed there so that is the reason you are showing as null now if you want to get the text here right that text I am a JS prompt right that text you want to print it out then how can you do it okay can comment it out so it will be dot alert dot get text you could see get text it is coming from the alert interface what is return type return type is string so I can st store in some string alert 
text okay then I can print it out in the console so that I can get it I can get the desired alert text right whatever it is really important to my valid for my validation <coughs> so it will open the page it will just click on that alert it will print the text I am a JMS from so here you can go to the console now you could able to see I am a JS from that is the way it is printing the alert so there are four important key methods available to handle the alert one is you can accept the alert with the help of the accept you can dismiss the alert with the help of dismiss method you can get the text of the alert with the help of get text and you can enter some value in the alert with the help of send keys method so alert interface will provide this four key method to handle deal with the alert because alert is the Java properties that is the reason you cannot identify write this with the help of element locator using selenium web driver it is not the HTML property that is the reason you need to take the help from the alert interface available in selenium web driver and with the help of four key important method dismiss accept get text and send keys you can deal with the alert any questions guys <coughs> the next one is how to perform headless browser testing okay in the first session you already asked that is it possible to like uh, do the execution without opening the browser yeah it is possible so there are a couple of browser through which you can just do the execution but it will not so, uh, show you the UI but right but it will give the desired result so why it is required sometime suppose say <coughs> You, you have given something right you need to execute a test case but in your browser in your system no, no not a single browser is opening so is it not possible to execute a test case without opening the browser yes it is possible sometimes all your browser is having problem corrupted right or sometimes some of the system there is no browser installed at all but it is possible to execute the test case without in launching the browser yes it is possible so performing test execution of the web application without opening a browser is called headless browser testing the headless browser acts similar to normal web browser user have to have full control over the web page loaded into the headless browser the only difference is user will not able to see the a graphical user interface so user have no options other than using headless testing when user machine does not have a GUI or graphical user interface for instance if user want to run test in Unix so it will not having the any GUI right then how you can perform so you need to always rely on the headless browser testing it is recommended to use the headless browser when tests are executed in parallel as user interface based browser consumes a lot of memory or resources so headless browser can be used for server side performance testing too in case you want to do your faster execution you want to do the parallel execution it does not matter right whether it's opening or not right you in the nightly basis you can run your script and you can get the right you want to get the result in the morning okay so headless browser will do you the faster execution because it will take uh, ut utilize less resources or less memory anyone can run test cases using headless browser then user will get the result in just few seconds it will be faster compared to the opening the browser and doing the navigation in the UI level when tester have to run the test case on the remote machine or server which does not have any browser but still user can execute the test cases user need to execute the test cases then user need to use the headless browser or else so some of the examples of headless driver include HTML unit ghost phantom GS chrome zombie JS or to web driver so primary use is HTML unit but you can make Chrome also headless browser so it will not open anything but it will do the execution HTML unit driver is the lightest weight and fastest implementation headless browser for web driver it is based on HTML unit it is the lightest means with the help of the HTML unit you can do more and more faster execution compared to all other browser it is known as headless browser driver that is the reason it is called as headless browser driver it is same as chrome firefox but does not have any GUI 
key features of HTML unit driver. It supports HTTP and HTTPS protocol. It supports HTML responses. It supports for cookies, proxy server support, excellent JavaScript support, ability to determine whether failing response from the server should throw exception or should be returned as page of the appropriate type. So what you need to do, you need to just go to the Google and you need to type with HTML unit driver download selenium right and there will be link will be there you can click any of the link and you can download any of the person right you could see now British version is there just you can download HTML unit driver any of the link right you can click here the jar file so you could will download it and it will look like that okay after downloaded I already have it in my system it's like that driver a jar file okay after download is done 4.7 percent will download it after download is done you need to go to your project and need to associate it to your project click on the properties click on the Java build path and you need to click on the add external jars you need to click here you need to open and you need to add I already added it here right add external jar similarly how you are adding the jar file because it is jar file HTML unit driver is jar file so that you can call it the HTML unit driver you can call it open and you need to click apply and close okay that is a simple thing you need to do I'll comment it out also whatever thing is already there I will comment it out static part so how you can create a object for instance for the uh, HTML unit driver so you already associated that jar file to your project so web driver driver equal to <coughs> new HTML unit driver you can press control enter okay it is not showing because you need to import it that is the reason new HTML unit driver you could see now it's already imported here right it is importing from the jar file from the HTML unit selenium okay so you need no need to set any path because you are already associating the driver here directly so all the jar file is already available so that is the reason you don't need to set any path after that with the help of the driver difference you can similar way you can go to any page driver dot get all the operation will be still same suppose say, I want to go to the Google page it that is the thing I can go then I can get the current URL so so I so I can I want to print because it will not open anything right so how I can validate it's working or not get current URL okay now let's try to run it the code so it will not open any browsers but it will still give you the result in quick seconds you could see right HTTP Google but it is not opening anything that is the reason it is called headless because you are not able to see the UI navigation but it will work right it will whatever in right execution you want to do you can still do it so that is the way you can do with the help of HTML unit driver now we can also make our chrome driver to headless so what we can do I will just system dot set properties so we can get the same code here right and then web driver driver equal to new chrome driver this is the two line I can copy it okay after that you need to make it headless right so what you need to do instead of web driver 
driver equal to chrome driver you need to use chrome options c h r o m e o p chrome options say i can create something called option equal to new chrome option so that is the chrome options available in selenium so i need to create object or instance after that with the help of that option reference i need to make a headless dot set headless this option coming right set headless you could see from the chrome options you need to make it true so that it will be headless after that web driver driver equal to new chrome driver and here you need to provide the reference of option so now your chrome driver browsers will be headless it will not open any ui right gui but it will still do the execution now let's save the code and let's try to execute it so what will happen it will do the execution same way but it will not open any gui you will not able to see the execution you will get the desired outcome yeah you could see you already get it but it is not opening any web page that is the way right headless browser you can make primary you should use always the html unit driver because it is the lightest weight drivers available right for across the globe and still you can use the other driver as a headless you can use chrome drive browser as a headless also so that it will not open any gui but still it will execute all your step as appropriate okay yeah any questions guys okay so let's comment out this code then what is cookies so in case you are surfing something in your mobile right ipad or maybe your laptop desktop you already seen in case you are opening in the google page right or any page and you are searching something that you used to store in your right your uh, i mean kind of uh, laptop desktop or mobile okay so how why it is stored because your you are already set up something that you want to store maybe 100 so latest search five latest search 10 latest search so based on the setting already it will be stored so cookies are files stored in local computer containing information submitted by the websites visited by user suppose in case you are going to youtube page right in case you are search something so automatically you could see whenever you type something those will be automatically come because your youtube is storing those information based on your latest search based on the browser based on your user's login credential right it will not same as browser to browser or maybe user to user okay in case you are logging your you using your user id credential and i am log using my user id credential i have searched something you will not able to be are you able to not able to see my search you able to see only your search for that particular browser for your rights i mean user credential <coughs> so the information is stored in the key value pair and allows a particular website to customize its content as per the user every time user loads the website the browser sends the cookies back to the server to notify the website of user previous activity cookies have a specific lifespan defined by the creator at the end of this a cookies become expired cookies often track information like how frequently the user visits what are the times of visit what banner have been clicked on what button clicked 
user preferences, item in the shopping cart, etc. This allows the site to present user with information customized to fit their need. Cookies are domain specific. Like domain cannot read or write to a cookie created by another domain. This is done by the browser for security purpose. Cookies are browser specific as well. In case you are searching Safari browser, in case you are searching uh, like Chrome browser, in case you are searching Firefox browser, it, like, it will not same because whatever search you have did using that browser, you are able to see only using that browser. So those are browser specific. Each browser stores the cookies in a different location. The cookies are browser specific and so a cookie created in a one browser will not be accessed by other browser. Some browser limit the number of cookies stored by each domain. So maybe you can maximum save 30, right? Latest search. And in, in case you are doing 50, so the, I mean, I mean whatever was backdated, that 20 will be removed and latest 30 will be stored. So some browser limits the number of cookies stored by each domain. Maybe 20 cookies, if the limit is exist, the new cookie will replace the old cookies. Cookies name are case sensitive. Right, in case you are doing with some upper upper case and it will not same with the lower case. Those are case sensitive. So upper case A and lower case A will not same. It will be considered as a two different cookies. Then how what are the different things you can do with the cookie? You can add cookie, you can get the list of cookie, you can get a particular cookie, you can delete all the cookie, and you can delete cookie by name. So before opening any page, right? Always you should remove the cookie. so that right nothing will be there stored okay so that all your uh, browser is will be removed automatically so how can you do it after maximizing driver dot manage dot delete all cookies okay you can use it always after that you can open any page so i want to open any page maybe facebook page After opening the page, you can store the cookie only. So how can you store the cookie? So you need to use something called cookie class. You need to take help from the cookie class. Cookie class. And you can create something called cookie one object equal to new cookie. Right? And here it will be key and value pair. So I can give some cookie name called Google that is my cookie name and then my right reference here so reference will be always ww part not the other part so that is my reference of the cookie that is the way you can store the cookie okay so it will be always key value pair command so i need to import the cookie class from where it open to selenium then i need to add the cookie to the browser right after giving the key and value pair combination so driver dot manage dot add cookie right here you need to provide the cookie reference cookie one so similar way you can right go with the other cookie say facebook so www dot facebook dot com it will be cookie 2 it will be cookie 2 so that is the way you can add cookie then now, now next is then how can you get the cookie details right so you can use call soiso say driver dot manage dot right get cookie named you could see get cookie named And here you can give the cookie name here. So based on the cookie you are giving information. 
so automatically you will get the details sorry that is the cookie name after that if you uh, uh, here if you press dot you could see these are the different thing is coming from the cookie class you can get the domain you can get the name you can get the path right so these are the different thing you can get it after giving that only www.facebook you can get all the details related to that so website or the cookie okay so i can get the domain similar way you can change it to cookie 2 or other cookie name and you can get the details right so instead of get domain i can get path i can get value right get name all this stuff you can get it run as java application it will open the page and it will give you the cookie here yeah. you could see facebook path was slash right and then its name is google now if you want to remove a particular cookie so how can you do it so that is the thing you can do it here already mentioned delete cookie name manage dot delete cookie with the help of the name otherwise you can remove all the cookie with the help of delete all cookies so that is the way right you can add different cookie to your browsers and you can deal with you can add n number of cookies so that those cookie you can store it so what it is important sometime right i need to store multiple stuff so that with the help of the name itself i want to navigate it so definitely it is possible because i can get the domain path name i can remove everything so that in case i want to remove all the cookies so that it will not take any space of the page and it will be i mean really f i mean execution or the or the navigation will be really faster without any issue otherwise sometime it might create trouble that is the reason sometime it is required to handle the cookie in the real time okay so that are the different operation you can do with the cookie you can remove all the cookie you can get the different cookies cookie name value right path right you can uh, add the cookie with the help of the key value pair combination you can get the particular cookie details name delete all cookie or delete delete the particular cookie name then in the next uh, in, uh, in the next topic i'll cover what is the important of buy all locator in selenium web driver so as of now you already see how to deal with uh, a particular element right element locator reference okay so say you are having id name xpath class tag name link text partial link text so with the help of any any one element you can handle the identify the right uh, that element with the help of any element locator technique you can identify the element after that you can perform the operation based on the element type it, if it is a edit box you can enter some value if it is a link you can click here if it is a drop down you can select any value like that but is it possible to handle to identify the web, web page web element with multiple element locator reference so that so today say I am trying to identify you by your name okay so your name is suppose say ABC okay but you it, ha it can happen right you can change your name to BCD after six five years so after five years that will not work like I'm just giving a reference but you will write uh, maybe mm, but you you are, you are having some mobile number say your mobile number you can change but your other card pan card voter card you will not be changing your passport you will not be changing so those are the multiple difference you can get so that in case one thing is not working so i can work, right can identify with the other thing and i like still identification will be successful and it will not be failure okay and before going to that by way uh, all locator i will show you uh, in selenium there is options available called implicit timeout okay so what it will do in case you are using implicit timeout after opening the page you can also do it so that in case your page is not loaded suppose say in case you want to load a page it might take say 25 seconds but it will not wait it will throw error that element is not found 
So that is the reason you can always use implicit timeout. So before throwing any error, it will wait for that 30 second time. Right after that, it will throw the error. So it will wait maximum 30 seconds. In case your search is successful in 5 seconds, it will not wait for the remaining 25 seconds. That is the beauty of the implicit timeout, implicit wait. So driver dot manage dot timeouts dot implicit wait long argument and time unit so say I want to wait for uh, 10 seconds right maximum 10 seconds so that in case page is loaded 5 seconds it will na operation will be successful in the 5 seconds then I can give here the time unit so time unit dot seconds so it is a one of the example of polymorphism sorry I mean uh, yeah um, yes in the Java you already heard right the many forms same method but with many different argument so here it is an argument second day hour all this stuff but I want to pass it with seconds so what will happen in case you are implicitly giving some wait time so in case page is not loaded it will wait for 10 seconds maximum after that it will throw the error so that is the reasons right in the real time we should always give some implicit timeout okay the next is like what is the importance of buy all locator because that is also related to the implicit timeout that is the reason I have covered here so buy all is an extra special locator in selenium web driver which help user to find the element based on the given locator locator could be any other type like ID, any type like ID name, class name, link text, partial link text, export CSS, etc. So buy all locator tries to find the element using the first locator if the element is not present then wait for the given implicit wait time once it reaches the maximum wait time and if there is no element then the buy all method try to find the element using the second locator, third locator, fourth locator like that. After that in case now everything is failing it will throw you the error. Okay. So what is the syntax? Like it will be buy all. Okay. So here suppose say after opening the Facebook page I want to identify that email field. So I can press F12 button here and I can go to the email field. I want to identify the email field, I want to enter some value, you could see name is email, id equal to email, so this is the two field, right, is available. So tomorrow one field might get thing, that is the reason I can take inference of one, two or more field, right, I will be taking the export as well, okay. So how will I identify the field, driver dot find element, driver dot it will be driver dot find element then here instead of buy right buy dot id all this stuff I'll be using called new buy all right so that I can take multiple reference and here I'll be using say buy dot name what is the name email right then I can give something called comma uh, then hmm, by dot ID I can give that again email and I can create X path also right so by dot X path this is the three difference I want to give so I'll be creating xpath here for uh, that particular field. So what is the tag name input slash slash input. I can create with the help of the ID. Okay, I can create xpath you could see one of one element. So that is the reference I can give it here. Okay now I want it is a text field I want to send something right dot send keys I need to end with double quote dot send keys ok 
okay i need to import that by all locator from the selenium dot org after that dot send keys say i want to enter like other than power okay so that is the only difference so now you can understand the difference with the help of by or locator instead of by dot name right only one part so i'll be using by all and where i am giving lot of reference like i element locator only so you can use three four five element locator so that in case today email is not working it got changed to email five so it will fail but i am still i am having id still i am having expert so out of five it might work for one it will still work it will not be a skip it will not be fail now let's try to run it first so it will try to search with the first element reference which is the name here and in case it is fine you could see it is working fine now say tomorrow you email has you change to email to email one so what will happen now name will not work here right name should be matched with email but i have changed it to email one so it will not work so it will go for the second search after waiting for 10 seconds not immediately it will not work for the second item it will wait for the implicit timeout whatever given which is 10 seconds now let's try to run <coughs> it will open the page as your first name is not matched it will wait for 10 seconds it will go for the second match you could see it is not entering harajan pal it will wait for 10 seconds after that it will enter the value as harajan pal because you have given implicit timeout as 10 you could see after 10 seconds entering now say tomorrow your second also is not matching you have given to the email 3 it should be email email 3 it is not matching so it will <coughs> first try to uh, identify with the name it is not matching it will wait for 10 seconds again it will go for the second it will wait for 10 seconds it is not working again it will go for the third fourth like that in case nothing is matching then it will throw the error so here it is third is matching so it will wait for 10 plus 10 seconds after that it will identify the element it will enter the value so that is the beauty of the buy or locator so that in case your one thing is not working you can give multiple reference so that right any anyone is working for second try three which is nothing but the web element locator only id name class name expert css right link test parcel link test or tag name only it will wait for the implicit timeout for the first item second item and so on <coughs> you could see after 20 seconds entering harder than pal so that is the way right you can use the buy or locator in the real time as well so that in case one element locator sometime right changes attribute got changes but you can give like two or three or different so that anything will match and definitely it will, it will not fail your test cases i will take a pause guys any questions okay cool then i'll go to the last topic for today's session which is very very important how to find the element from a auto suggestive drop down suppose there is a google page <coughs> you can enter something here so i am entering like horizon a you could see so you are getting lot of options right and you could see horizon automation library in the third place so you can select it here but next time again if you press and like enter horizon a you could see that is the first option is coming and you can write based on your search criteria a lot of things will coming so it can happen for any auto suggestive drop down box so first thing is that you need to identify how many options is coming right after that based on some right enter given you can uh, select the element automatically it will navigate to the other page so that way right you can search something from the auto search to drop down so what is the approach so while user navigating to any software website with search box that search box shows auto suggest list when user types some word inside it simplest example of ajax auto suggest, uh, suggest drop list is google search suggestion when user will type something inside it will show them a list of suggestion form where option can be selected based on their need 
Xpath pattern should be same for all Ajax auto suggest drop down lips. So whatever option it is showing for all of the all of the option Xpath pattern will always same. So user need to use for loop to feed that changing values to Xpath of drop list different item. Other one thing user need to consider is user don't know how many item it will show in Ajax drop down list. So some keywords show user two items, some keyword three, four like that. So how can you handle this part? Let's see. So this is the search box. First let's try to identify it, the element reference. With the help of F12 button, I can go here and you could see that name is Q. With the help of the name Q, I can write uh, identify the element. So driver dot find element by dot name what is the name is q i already know that is unique so that is the way i can go dot send keys i can i enter something called horizon a so I say right so that's the part i want to enter so as and when i'm entering it will give me the lost of suggestion so i need to wait for some time otherwise i will not able to see or not able to handle so I need to wait for some time thread dot sleep for two or three seconds so that all the options will be loaded right otherwise it will be displaying some error because option will not be loaded so it will be display some error so you need to give some thread dot sleep right after that you need to identify those things with the help of xpath so you can identify any of the element so all xpath will be same here so you could see class is that so you can create with the help of div and class click span you could see all the options will be coming here right so let's try to identify with the help of that one okay that is the parent class here and all the options will be there in the parent class so i'll be creating a xpath here control f what is the tag name div slash slash div and this is the class so I will be giving third bracket at the rate class equal to class value you could see it is giving one of 12 element and you could see all the element xpath is still same so that is the way you can create right xpath and you can get the list of element with the help of fine elements so driver dot find elements right you will give you list of web elements so return type will be list of web elements so by dot export so I need to store in the list of web element so I am storing it here list of web element and I can give some variable name called uh, options right so what the error I need to import the list from the java util package after that I in case I want to get the size how many drop down is available I can simply get it right options dot size we could see return type is integer from the list interface so I can save in some integer integer uh, right uh, option size that is my variable and I can print it out now okay now see whether it's giving is 12 or not because that is 12 options available with the help of the xpath so if you run your code it should give you the options result as 12 So first you need to identify the element, you need to enter some value, you need to wait for some time so that all the options will be there. After that you need to identify the options with the help of the xpath. You need to get with the help of the find elements. You need to store it, the list of web element. You can get the size of the what are the similar searches. You could see the option is coming as 12. So it is matching with my requirement, right? Here you could see because it is coming as 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, like 12 total, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
and I think in the last also 2 is there right total 12 is there ok so it is working now next question will that I want to select right I already entered Haradhan A but I want to select Haradhan automation library then how can I do it right let us comment out these two lines because I already get the size here so I need to use a for loop for integer i equal to 0 i less than it is starting from 0 so it will go till less than right options dot size dot size i plus plus Here in the for loop you need to give some if condition if option dot gate of every i wherever you are iterating dot get text right and you can e ignore equal case so you can use equals ignore case so that case will not be sensitive right upper case lower case does not matter and you want to select a horizon space automation library from here then what you need to do in case it is matching in the for loop so you need to select options dot gate of i dot click and after that you want to break the loop because and in case your condition is matching you don't want to iterate so you will be breaking the loop that will be saving time otherwise in case you are having 100 options so you need to spend that time to search all the options so that is the way you can select Haradhan automation library from the after searching Haradhan A from the list now let us try to run the code and let us see whether that is selected or not So, yeah, you could see Haradhan Automation Library got selected. So, what is the approach we are taking? So, we will be identifying the search box. We want to enter some right options, not the full part. After that, we want to give some thread time, maybe uh, slip time, thread dot slip 2 seconds, 3 seconds, so that all the options will be loaded fully. After that, we can create XPath because for all the options, XPath will be similar and we can found out how many options already displayed with the help of that right suggestion uh, search uh, from the search based on uh, suggestion and after that with the help of the find elements we can store uh, all the options in the list of web element then we can run a for loop where it will starting from 0 to the I mean length minus 1 size minus 1 and I plus plus after that I can use a in the for loop I can use a if conditional statement right where I can check if the get text equal to ignoring case means case sensitive case I want to whatever thing I want to uh, select and it will immediately it will click on that option it will break out the loop so that way right it will click on that option from the auto selected drop down I will just go through all the thing once after uh, before wrapping it up for today's session so frame you already seen right frame is nothing but it will embed it in some web pages some advertisement may, uh, might be embedded some web page so frame or iframe tags would be there in case some frame is already there right you can get the options called right click on that particular section like redroll frame or frame source otherwise you can press ctrl f after uh, clicking on the april button and you can search with frame or iframe in case something is available you can handle the frame with the help of frame index right or the id or name of the frame or the web element different of the frame so first you need to handle the frame after that you can identify any element and you can interact with the element otherwise it is not possible so capturing screenshot is always recommended for any kind of testing manual automation api performance anything because that is the thing you'll be showcasing to your respective stakeholder right so this is three step process you need to first create an object for instance for the text interface skin, um, text screenshot interface after that you need to call the get screenshot as method from the text screenshot interface I need to show uh, save as type output type as file then you need to call the copy method from the file handler class and you need to place the source to the destination file 
Sometimes there will be alert or pop-up might be there in the web page. So alert and pop-up is a Java uh, properties, not the HTML property. That is the reason you cannot inspect them right with the help of element inspection. So there is an alert interface available through which you can handle the alert. You can accept, dismiss, get the text or you can send the keys to the alert. Right? Sometime, right in case your system does not have your uh, any kind of uh, uh, browser installed, right? Or maybe you want to do the faster execution for the parallel testing. So you can do the headless browser testing without the op opening the GUI. You can do the execution. So you can use HTML unit driver. Uh, right, Chrome, Ghost, Phantom GS, Zombie GS, OATR web driver for the headless browser testing. So it will do all your execution, but it will not open the GUI. So your memory will be used less and it will be more faster. Right, sometimes cookies sometimes are required. Right, uh, it will be stored in your browser based on your browser cookie will be stored and based on the maximum uh, right part it will be stored. Your old value will be replaced by the new one. It will be vary based on the browser to browser. All browser will not be having the same cookies. Right, so cookie rust are domain specific, cookies are sense case sensitive. So you can add cookies, you can get cookies, name, values, right, other details, you can delete all the cookies or you can delete all the cookie by name. There is a important uh, uh, like um, extra special locator available which is called by all through which you can associate multiple element locator technique for a particular element so that in case uh, one or two things is not working, it you can give three or four so that other thing is working it will not fail your test case it will still identify the element and it will do the relevant operation and the last one in case you are having some drop down right where you can uh, enter something after that it will give you suggestion and you can select a value from the auto theft drop down so you can first identify the xpath because all the list of auto theft drop down thing xpath will be still similar you can uh, write you can uh, get the list of web element store right after that you can use a for loop and then you can give the condition in case text is matching after like uh, case ignore and that then you can select that particular option so it will already navigating to that particular right you will select that option it will navigating to the relevant link or relevant page so that's all from today's session guys thank you